I've got a little collection going. See behind me? Some vintage kitchen items that I am just dying to go out and hunt for some more. So if you guys want to come with, stay tuned. Specifically, I'll be hunting for mid-century modern decor. So anything with an atomic starburst like this, anything with a colorful pattern like this, and specifically, I want some of these fruit pieces that are made of some sort of chalky material that people used to decorate with. If I run onto a mix master, especially pink, I'll be the happiest girl on the planet. The store that I'm shopping at today is the Warehouse Antique Mall in Marion, Illinois. I believe it's the largest antique store in my area and I love going there. Right off the bat, it didn't disappoint because the first thing to catch my eye was this beautiful frosty blue pitcher with the gold trim. Then there was this whole set of all the colors of the Pyrex nesting bowls. Oh my gosh, my heart leapt, but these things are way out of my league. The refrigerator containers, again, how I do love them. They had some pieces that were looking more 70s to me with the green and brown, although I do have one green Pyrex or Fire King dish in my collection so far. Here we have some more of the 70s, more mushrooms and greens and browns and orange colors that I'm not really after, but I'm starting to appreciate, starting to see how that actually was a style. And a lot of younger folks these days are just grabbing this stuff up left and right, I'm told. Some more 70s style drinkware. I swear I know someone who had this very set. I remember that waviness in the glass. I'm really paying attention to all the glass sets. I like that this has a caddy. That reminds me of mid-century modern. I would love to find one with a caddy, but it's just not really the colors I'm going for. If I were doing my living room mid-century modern, this would be the lamp to get, but it was $375. But isn't it beautiful? It's the perfect mid-century piece. And here is my first encounter with the Atomic Starburst today. These glasses are perfect, perfect Starburst. The only fault in them is that they're orange and I don't really want orange. They had this really neat display of Vaseline glass that I hadn't seen there before. If you're unfamiliar, this is the glass that was produced in the 1930s and it did contain uranium and so that's what makes it glow when it's under a black light like this. In 1943, they started restricting the production of this kind of glass because they needed the uranium to make the atom bomb. So isn't that crazy to think about? Now I can't say for sure if these little hankies are mid-century modern, if they're earlier timepieces or later, I don't know. All I know is that they have flowers, they are in very cute colors, and I couldn't resist them. So I picked up <laughs> all of these colorful ones. They were only $1.50 a piece, how could I resist? and I plan to do a craft with them at some point. Now, just about around every corner of this antique store, I saw some mid-century modern furniture. Lots and lots of dressers and side tables, coffee tables, and you can tell by their handles, you can tell by their legs, and you can tell by their shiny finish that they would fit so perfectly into a mid-century modern decor home. Now, like I said, I have not went so far as to start decorating my living room mid-century modern. I don't know 
if I'm uh, aiming to do that or not. I'm starting with my kitchen with the bright, cheerful colors. I feel like some of this furniture is just a little too brown for me. I was drawn to this side table because of its legs and because of its little diamond details that makes it look very 50s and it was a lighter color than all the rest of the furniture around it. So it did catch my eye. So if I was going to do something like this in my living room, I'd probably be looking for pieces like that. Here's another picture with some gold trim that I think could be mid-century, maybe more like 60s. And behind it is a starburst, but definitely not an original. This is definitely something made not too long ago. And for the price of $5, you know, definitely not an original, but I think I can transform this into a really cute kitchen piece. All I need to do is remove those jewels and do some painting. So stay tuned for craft with that coming up. So what I say, around every corner there was more dressers and tables, everything you would need to furnish your whole home mid-century modern. But here's some stretched glass vases I've actually not ever seen in clear before. Usually they are in a lot of colors and I really liked the handles on this trunk and there were a few other pieces scattered around in this booth that caught my attention, but nothing that I really needed for my house. Up on this top shelf are two pieces sitting side by side that I actually already own. So the weekend before last, I went antiquing and I purchased one of these orange juice carafes. And I also have this casserole dish that you might've noticed in the beginning of today's video. A lot of times when I ran into these dressers and furniture like this, I was picturing who might have owned them before and I think about like my dad, like maybe he had a dresser or a side table like this in his room growing up. Um, things like that pop into my head when I'm in the antique stores and it makes me like this stuff even if it's not my style. Could anything be more 50s than a cute Coca-Cola refrigerator? Man, how I'd love to have that. But also these chrome canisters, they are a staple in a 1950s kitchen. Not my style, so I'm going to pass. And if you're wondering, well then what in the world did you buy? Because you're passing on all the good stuff. <laughs> I did buy some stuff and I'll show you my haul at the end of this video. And I have plans for some of it. So stay tuned to the end to see what I wound up purchasing. I always have to stop and admire a nice Formica table and chairs. <laughs> but this toaster sitting on top of this one really caught my interest. I've never seen a toaster quite like this before. It looks kind of dangerous. And this is it. This is the buy of the century. This table with two chairs was only $65. Now, how in the world was I supposed to walk out of this antique store and leave behind this awesome specimen of mid-century modern? Someone obviously had recovered the backs of the chairs and they could have went more original to the table, but I didn't even mind that. I didn't mind it at all. If I had a place, if I needed a kitchen table and chairs, this would be it, hands down. Here's a kooky little decoration that caught my eye. I don't know why, why this airplane is something that I thought would be so fun to display. And what do my eyes behold but a mid-century modern contraption? It's a gadget. Can anyone guess? Oh, you probably saw the tag. It's a hair dryer. Oh yes, it's a salon style hair dryer, like with the hood that I'm assuming you put this on a table, park your chair up underneath it, and dry your hair just like at a salon, and it looks like it's in darn near perfect condition. And be still my heart, 
It's a radio, a clock radio. I love vintage radios. I would collect them all. And this one actually works, but the only trouble with the old radios like this, it's probably just AM, no FM. I almost walked right by this treasure, hiding behind this brown crock that I think my sister would love, <laughs> is this colorful vintage syrup dispenser that is the turquoise color that I do so desire. So yeah. That one's going to be in my haul later on. I'll go ahead and tell you that. And I had to turn around and take a second look because there was this glass rolling pin. Have you guys ever seen a glass rolling pin? Because this was a first for me, but I think I've been too scared to use it that it would break. This display was a feast for the eyes, all the red 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 <laughs> i don't know what it is about red in the 1950s i just think they go hand in hand red and turquoise and some pink and some yellow and some green well you know just all the cheerful colors don't you love it when antique store has an upstairs you know you know the good stuff's up there but let me tell you this store had no air conditioning so I was sweating profusely walking through this store. Um, yeah, I suffered to do my antique shopping today and to bring you this video, but it was worth it. Well, well worth it. This booth had a few interesting items. I think that these could be stretched glass vases. I'm not sure since they aren't stretched a whole whole lot but I did like the juice set here and I thought that this little animal this little is it a puppy dog or something it looked like it could be from the 50s and I wondered if this kind of glassware is mid-century modern if you know let me know in the comments but top shelf my eye went to the two little kids that are hugging I actually like them a lot because of their turquoise color Books a lot of time catch my eye, and this time they were workbooks that someone had labeled desk copy, so I guess they belong to the teacher, published in 1956. They always remind me of my mom because she used to tell me that she did her work in school out of Dick and Jane workbooks. But this one was new to me, Dot and Jim. I've never seen a Dot and Jim. It looks just like Dick and Jane, but it's Dot and Jim. So was it going by what grade you were in, your reading level, or um, I don't know. How did they, who got Dot and Jim and who got Dick and Jane? Um, yeah, let me know in the comments if you did any work out of any of these cute nostalgic workbooks. And here is the one that got away. I don't know why I didn't buy this set. The coffee pot and the cream and sugar all together were only $19.99 and they were the right colors for my kitchen. So I don't know why. I guess I had second thoughts about it for some reason. Then I looked up and thought I had found the holy grail, <laughs> the atomic kitties. Oh, I want some atomic kitties but I looked on the bottom and I just wasn't certain that that's what they were. For one, I'd never seen speckled atomic kitties before. And secondly, the ribbons on their necks looked way, way too new and the price just seemed kind of cheap for original atomic kitties. So I left them set. Now it seems like every time I'm in this antique store, this is the booth where I find a whole lot of good stuff and it didn't disappoint me this time around either because down here hiding under everything was a Better Homes and Gardens decorating book. And when was it published? None other than 1956, complete with color pictures to show us exactly how we should be decorating our homes to be mid-century modern. So this book was $12. It's a little high for what I would normally pay for a book, but yeah, this even smelled like the 1950s. And so 
uh, not to spoil the ending, but this one did have to come home with me too. By the way, how on earth would I know what the 1950s smelled like? I am, I really don't have any clue. I guess I'm just imagining this is what it smelled like. Happiness and home-baked pies and bread. <laughs> I loved seeing these old Gerber baby food actual glass jars. For some reason, they made me smile. There was a lot on these shelves to make me smile. The colors of everything just made me happy. I love the little lamb pulling the cart and the colors in these glasses and just a whole lot of happy, happy things. Here's another thing that might have gotten away. Um, this set of glasses. I guess I wasn't really sure if they were mid-century modern or <laughs> 1980s. Anybody got a guess? Now remember at the beginning I said I was after some fruit decorations. Well here they are, that chalky material I was talking about. And it really couldn't get any better for me than this set of cherries. Someday when I'm decorating other parts of my house I might look for dishes like this just to sit out on top of a credenza maybe. <laughs> And this piece is supposed to be mid-century modern too. I believe it because of its boomerang shape, but it kind of reminded me of a shark tooth. Now here's more stuff like what I'm after. It was hiding in this little crack and it is a vintage ice crusher. It was electric and obviously it had this thing to catch the ice and on the top, it would open up and that's where you would put the ice inside to be ground up and crushed. And I really liked it, but yeah, I, I didn't really know if I would be buying it to actually use or just to set out. Kind of looked like some work. I really loved this canister set. Boy, there was nothing that this canister set did not deliver on in my eyes but it was $30 for only the two pieces and it was getting toward the end of my shopping trip and I don't know about you guys, but getting toward the end of shopping trips, I'm starting to feel a little guilty about spending money. So I left the canister set. I also adored this little kitchen clock. Well, I'm not sure it's a kitchen clock. It could go anywhere, I guess, but I'm on the hunt for a kitchen clock, but the trouble of it is I want one to hang on the wall so, and this one didn't, so I left it behind. Old vintage packaging like this always catches my eye, so I had to pick it up and see what was inside, and it was an old vintage pastry bag set, which I thought was pretty cool. Okay, here I am back home, and here is my haul. The salon style hair dryer. I'm still amazed at this thing. It might be from the 60s or 70s. I really couldn't say, but look how new this plug looks. So I've yet to test it out to see if it works. But for $7, I just thought it was a treasure I had to have. And I got the Starburst that I plan to craft into a kitchen decoration. Say hi, Yachty. Yes, he likes to inspect all the things I bring home to make sure they're safe. <laughs> and here's the little syrup dispenser. The book from Better Homes and Gardens Decorating. Hey, get off my hankies. That's not for you to sit on. All of the pretty little hankies. And back here is the orange juice carafe that I had mentioned that I bought in a previous antique shopping trip. He's not gonna let you see. And I, I see that it's faded, but in real life, if you can see this in real life, these oranges actually look pink and these leaves actually look kind of turquoisey, which I adore. I know you can see the actual real color on the inside, but if this was full of orange juice, you wouldn't be able to see that. <laughs> So in this case, I like that something is worn and faded. So there's everything that I came home with, plus a Yachty hat. 
and I had a ball, even though it was over 100 degree weather, it was still so much fun. Thanks for joining me on my antique shopping trip today. I had a ball. I love making videos like these. If you like seeing these videos, let me know in the comments because I can antique shop and thrift all day long, every day. Also, if you want to see more antique shopping trips, I've loaded up another video for you. If you're in the mood to see more antiquing fun, then click right here on this video I provided and I will see you next time. Bye.